What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Rocky, from Fight Camp, and I am here with my boy, Coach PJ. We are here at Knockouts Boxing Gym in Southgate, California, for a very special guest, Delonte Tiger Johnson. Currently, he's signed with Top Rank, and he has two pro fights, and we are here today. Because he invited us to his super secret fight camp, where he's getting ready for his next professional bout. So today, he's going to take us through some of the tips and secrets, what it's like to train as a pro and as an Olympian. Let's check it out. Hey, Tiger Johnson from Cleveland, Ohio. You know, 147, what to wait. 2020 Olympian. I've been on Team USA since 2016, and now I'm a professional. I'm 2 0 with one knockout, and I'm now in a training camp in Los Angeles, California. I'm here at the boxing gym, about to watch him spar, and it's very similar in a way um, when you're preparing for sparring, the same way you are preparing for a fight. You know, you got the headphones in, you're getting wrapped up, and you just want to take some time to yourself just to make sure that you're mentally there. Sometimes sparring is just as nerve-wracking as a fight, so it's um, very imperative to make sure that you work in out those nerves before you hop into the ring. It's about to spar one of the best in the world, too, so y'all can't see it, but just know that we we watching. We watching for y'all. We'll let y'all know how it went afterwards. Tiger's fighting soon. The tentative date is March 26th, and obviously, you know, he hasn't been matched up yet, but when he does, his opponent's gonna be like YouTube and him, trying to figure out like where Tiger's skill sets are now, where Tiger would have the advantage, where Tiger would have the disadvantage. So this is why we don't show the scar because we don't want to give that away. Tiger's opponent has that Mexican style boxer. They like to be on the inside and throw a lot of volume. And the way Tiger is actually um, countering against that is just using his speed. He's actually known for his speed, and that's why they call him Tiger. <laughs> What was it like today sparring, bro? Um, well, you know, he's, he's, he's a, a world-class fighter, so, you know, he's 18 and 0, 18 knockouts, so I got the opportunity. Well, his coach, um, you know, asked, asked us if, if we could get some rounds in, and I took the opportunity, man, to get some of the best work I can, so um, he's definitely one of the best work I had. Yeah. It was a pleasure of me having him help me for my fight, and I'm helping him with his fight also, yes. so but that was a good experience, man. And, I sparred, this, today was my second time sparring them, so um, I learned a lot from both both days sparring them, so it was definitely, you know, some good work I needed. What has been a, a, a change from where you were at in the amateur days to where you're at now as a professional fighter? Oh, well, I had to learn that it's a big step up when you're going from amateurs to pros. As an amateur, I was able to go overseas and fight all around the world and get the best experience fighting different styles and different countries you know what i'm saying so i fought three four time olympians you know what i'm saying from different countries at a young age i've been i've been, I've been fighting elite since i was 18. so i've been fighting people that's 30 going on 40 stuff like that so i just been for the past five six years i've just been we've been going around the world getting all the best experience getting the best work we had so when it was time for me to make a step up to the pros um, we had to make minor adjustments you know of course uh working on a lot of things to stay ready for the uh pro game but that world experience that i had as an amateur helped me a lot i know i've been watching you fight for like four years now and your speed is incredible so can you tell me more about what you do in your training camp to actually maintain that speed, it really sets you apart from other fighters. Um, actually, man, for for real, I always had speed growing up as a kid, so um, a lot of people ask me, like, how I'm, how I'm so fast or how I get my speed up. Man, I have no idea. Doing different drills, hitting a double end bag, the speed bag, you know, working on, you know, different fast combinations, that, that also helps keep your speed or make you faster but I think it's just a naturally gifted thing for me I just naturally just fast what do you do like with your coach uh, PJ when you're training for your training camp that's different from when you were training in the amateurs oh um, well when I'm, when I'm with PJ uh, we actually work on sitting down on punches better um, making sure that um, you know my defense and reflexes is good I'm getting out the way I'm boxing being more tight and fluent you know what I'm saying with my punches uh, when I'm in the clinch you know what I'm saying learning how to move my head and work on the inside and, you know what I'm saying, keeping my hands up, defense good. So it's just little minor adjustments like that. I wanted to ask you about strength conditioning specifically and, and how is that being applied in your training camp? Was it something that you did as an amateur or is it something that you're doing now as a pro? Talk to them about that if you can. Um, well, strength conditioning, um, everybody, well, I feel like everybody's different. A lot of people like to do a lot of 
weights, like lift weights and stuff like that. I feel like it's not necessary to lift heavy. I don't lift heavy in certain conditioning. Yes. What, we, what we focus on is we focus on getting stronger, but you don't lift heavy. You know what I'm saying? So like, let's say you got somebody that's lifting heavy, like let's say 100 pounds, and he's doing a whole bunch of reps. Well, you can do 50 pounds and just do a lot of reps with 50 pounds. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Instead of just going heavy, you yeah. doing less reps. You know what I mean? Condition wise, you know, you want to do your sprints, um, jump row, hit the speed, um, bag drills. Definitely get your miles in every morning. You gotta have a good diet. You don't want to have a horrible diet. Okay, so what's your diet like? Oh uh, well, this morning, this morning I had egg whites, um, turkey sausage, fruit, two slices of toast, and water. Say your fight was tomorrow, right? Uh -huh. What would you eat for dinner? Oh, pasta. You got you it. pasta? Red, red, so, red pasta, yeah. So you like to have pasta the night before a fight? Right. And what about the morning? The morning of my morning fight? Morning of your fight, yeah. Um, eat a good breakfast. Uh, well, I mean, the diet is not the diet is not good until after your fight. So you don't want to weigh in and then eat a burger. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you still got to fight tomorrow. So um, you still want to have a good diet. But you can eat like some red pasta to get some carbs. Get some carbs um, still drink your water. And still eat some fruit. When it comes fight night, that morning. Well, my, my, my favorite go-to is uh, waffles. Woo! Come on. It's waffles, scrambled eggs, turkey sausage, fruit, and water. That's my go-to. How many ounces of water do you drink a day? I try to go for a gallon a day. A gallon right there. Yeah. Do you like your water just plain, or do you put like fruits in it? Do you like to have the electrolyte powder? Uh, like, how do you like your water? I like electrolytes, but mainly I just drink room to get your water. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Well, I know we're here in the midst of that, but I wanted to ask you more specifically, like, what is your fight camp actually like? Like in the beginning, in the middle, when you're peaking, and like the week of the fight. Well, when you're in the beginning of training camp. Um, you, you know, you're overweight, um, you, have some weight, you have some weight to lose, so in the beginning, the main focus is getting back to the groove, getting back in the mix, um, starting your diet, getting your weight down, you know what I'm saying, working on things that you got to work on, and then like when you're going towards the middle, then you should be ready halfway to your weight, halfway or a little under, okay. of, getting, of getting to your weight, you know what I'm saying, you're not all the way on weight, but in the middle of camp, you know what I'm saying, you slim down, you in shape, you sparring good, and going towards the end of camp, you pretty much ready, you know what I'm saying, like, the end of training camp is basically like, you just basically slow it down, and you work on, basically just tighten up, just stand, prepare for the fight, like the sparring and all the hard work is done, you know what I'm saying, strength and conditioning, all that is the beginning and the middle, I love that. you know what I mean, so, towards the end, you're pretty much there. What's your mental preparation for a fight, especially towards the end? I saw like when you were doing shadow boxing earlier, like you were like kind of thinking about what moves you were going to throw, and you actually executed those, it, does that help you with your mental preparation? Um, I like to visual, visualize the fight, try to picture what's happening in the ring and making sure that uh, I execute the game, basically. My last question, um, you were on the USA team for quite a long time, and those training camps you actually spent at the Olympic Training Center. Now you're a pro athlete, so what is the difference now, since you don't have that Olympic Training Center, are you always going to be like, traveling and entering different camps just like, like how you did today? It's a lot of work outside of my city. Like where I come from, it's not, a, it's not enough work I come from. So you gotta go out and get, you know what I'm saying, get the best work you can. So pretty much, get yeah, more traveling, yeah. So pretty much just back and forth, go home, train, and then I found an opportunity to come out here and train with Terrell, work out state, and Virgil. So I took the opportunity to come out here and get some of the best work I can. Do you feel like it's more fun doing a professional camp versus uh, an amateur camp? I think I, I think it's fun just off the fact that you're around world class fighters. You know, even uh, even on the Olympic team, you're the best of the best. Right. And you're on the Olympic team, you're the best of the best in the country. So you just around greatness. You know what I mean? And, and in the pros, I'm around world champions. You know what I'm saying? And people that's that's chasing the same goal as me. So it's definitely motivating. That's definitely inspiring too.